Welcome to this another beautiful episode of Learning Beyond School. In today's show, we have Mrs. Gayatri Deshmukh. She is a lawyer and a journalist who lived a life of a monk and stepped into that path of spirituality. And also, she is one of the experienced and the most positive lady I came to know. This is the part one of the podcast in which we are talking a lot about relationship, infatuation, teenage love, heartbreaks, dealing with rejection, and a lot more. So make sure you check out the timestamp in the description. Also, if you're new to this channel, then make sure you have subscribed this because I guarantee you, you will get immense value out of this conversation and from future ones. I will catch you in the second part. Till then, enjoy the show. Thank you so much, Anmit, for inviting me. How are you, ma'am? I'm fantastic. How are you doing? I'm. I'm really. I'm also also fine. I'm really, really looking forward to have a great and positivity conversation with uh, with you. I'm looking forward to this meeting. So, ma'am, uh, like when I studied about yourself, uh, the one thing that popped me, and I really want to ask you, is that uh, like before you chose to be step into that spiritual journey, what was your past like? What you what you did before you before you like decided that i'll be a monk so ma'am how's your past look like yes ma'am my past will not give you any idea about what might have actually prompted me to take up this journey or my past might actually give you a complete idea about why i might have entered into this particular journey i, I was just 17 years old immediately after my 12th standard I started writing as a freelancer for the Times of India, Nashik edition, from where I come. Yes, ma'am. And I was a regular writer at Times of India. I was also pursuing law at the moment. It was five-year law course. Usually what happens is after you pass your HSC, you go to college, you have fun, and then you look for work. Hmm. After HSC, I went to college. I did not like it. So I went to Times of India. I started working. So I started working right at the age of 17. I did not really spend much of my time in the college inside the classroom. Mm. I spent a lot of my time outside the college, on the kattas. Mm. We call it kattas when we all come mm. together, gather yes, together, we mm. have fun. So that is what my life was right from the beginning. Mm. After I finished my law, I was at National Human Rights Commission, New Delhi, as an mm. intern for a month. Hmm. After that, when I returned, I practiced law for some time, hmm. but I was not really very happy with the environment because happy people don't go to court. Hmm. If you're happy, <laughs> you will not be in the court premises. Yes, I didn't really like the energy, so I took up a full-time job at Times of India. But this time, hmm. I did not take up the job as a civic journalist or a political journalist. Hmm. I took fun job wherein I was writing about lifestyle, actors, actresses, Bollywood, film mm. industry, television industry in general. Mm. I was basically a page three reporter. I used to go to parties and that was a part of my job. Mm. I used to click photographs of the parties, report about that. We, after that, I went on to become a PR for a television channel. Mm. I spent some time there when I worked on the publicity of television shows and everything. And after that, I became an executive producer in another TV channel wherein I was involved in the creatives of the television shows that we see, all the Sarsgum dramas, all the mm. reality shows. So I was involved in them. And then in the month of January 2018, something happened and I just quit everything and I decided that mm. I need to transform myself now because mm. in 2018, I was going to turn 30. I started mm. working at 17. Mm. It was a most needed sabbatical at that point of time. Mm. That is when I decided that maybe this was time for me to pursue my interest, which was meditation. Mm. I was first introduced to meditation in 2008. And since mm. then, every now and then, I would associate myself with certain meditation techniques. I would practice certain kind of meditation. Mm. I would attend a lot of workshops. Mm. In 2018, I decided to go into it completely. So mm. I spent some time at Vipassana Center. I spent some mm. time at Rishikesh learning various meditation techniques, right mm. from Chakra meditation to Shakti Sanchalan mm. to even Sufi meditation for that matter. Mm. 
So after learning all of this, I visited Amarnath in the month of July. And mm. when I returned, I just thought that now I need to test myself. Mm. So I was someone who spent half my life in an AC office sipping hot chocolate from a Starbucks mm-hmm. cup. <laughs> and now I had decided I'm going to just go out there in the wilderness without my ATM card. Mm. And I was going to walk bare feet around River Narmada, which is Narmada mm. Parikrama. And I was going to actually understand what is minimalistic lifestyle? What exactly are our basic needs? And mm. where exactly we overreach ourselves? Mm. And that is the experience I got during this spiritual journey, which took me for about seven months. Uh, so ma'am, uh, like in uh, when it comes to a teenager life, relationship played a very, very huge role. And uh, we does. and and we all are in a age or in a phase where there are a lot of hormonal hormonal changes occur in the body. Absolutely. So, so ma'am, I like what I observed, what I see around me in school in college. I believe that students are uh, like whenever they had a s- small attraction towards a girl or boy, they mm-hmm. considered they consider this small attraction as love. and the reality it and rea- reality is it is just an infatuation which they don't as- understand honestly speaking that is indeed a thing and until and unless you are enjoying it it's not a problem but if you stop enjoying this thing and you start getting into it very i mean if you start getting into the serious aspects of it then you have to ask yourself one question are you prepared for it mm. if you personally ask me romeo mm. and juliet became an eternal love story because both of them committed suicide when they were teenagers mm. if they had survived a little longer romeo mm. would have had a few other affairs juliet would have had a mm. few other affairs and this entire story would have never happened mm. most of the eternal love stories they start and they end exactly where they are supposed to in their teenage life hmm. after that there is absolutely nothing that you can do about it so ma'am according that, yes ma'am have you have you heard about this particular saint called adi shankaracharya uh, no ma'am i haven't heard about him adi shankaracharya was 8 year old when he decided to become a monk Hmm. he wrote a lot of literature half the stotras and mantras that we chant today right from achyutam keshavam shiva panchaksharam they are hmm. all written by him hmm. and he was asked the same question by one of his disciples hmm. i am teenager i have hormonal hormonal imbalances hmm. i look at a girl and i feel attracted hmm. what do i do hmm. to that Adi Shankaracharya responded with this particular sentiment if you don't mind i can read it out to you sure ma'am sure ma'am nadi stana bhara nabhi desham drushtva maga moha vesham etan mansa vasadi vikaram manasi vichintaya varam vara here he is very explicit when he is asking this boy what are you attracted towards are you attracted towards her breast or are you attracted mm. towards her waist mm. or her hair or what is it exactly mm. about her entire body that you are attracted about mm. now analyze what is it exactly is it really worthy of you losing your mind mm. whatever you are getting attracted to is it worthy enough for you to lose your mind over it it's just a normal thing every second person in the world has breasts every second person will have a waist so what is so different about it analyze it for yourself and you will get your own answers the problem with teenagers is they love to go with the flow of the things they love the intensity of emotions mm. if i'm hating somebody that hate has to be this level If I'm mm. angry with someone, I have to express that anger in a way that everybody gets to know that I'm angry. That's mm. why you will see most of the fights, like wherein a proper dishum dishum fight, it happens in college. 
Mm-hmm. Most of the bike races, they happen in college because emotions are at the highest intensity. But mm. then there will be time when you have to stop and you have to ask yourself, what is this exactly that I'm doing this for? Mm-hmm. And that is when the answer to your hormonal imbalances come. Mm-hmm. When you look at a girl, exactly what is the reason why you're getting these emotions? Mm-hmm. And once you get an answer to that, you will be able to control your emotions. You will mm-hmm. be able to control your feelings. And why? Because you know, it is just hormonal. It is just temporary. It will pass. It will pass. And I don't mm-hmm. want to get emotionally involved at this stage because I'm not yet emotionally strong to handle the consequences. Such a, such a beautiful That's answer. It. I'm really short about such a beautiful answer, ma'am. Uh, like, like uh, after hearing the answer, like it's like you are saying that whenever you are in that phase, just take a pause and ask right questions to yourself. And those right, right questions would lead to a right path and will give all your answers. Absolutely. Ask so, ma- right questions to yourself. So, ma'am, like if you have to differentiate between these two terms, which is infatuation, love, then like what are what are some differences you would like to give? Infatuation will always be very intense. Hmm. Infatuation will always be very intense because it is temporary. Hmm. Love, on the other hand, it will grow with time because love is something that is going to give you strength. And when you say that you love someone, you cannot categorize that feeling of love in a particular manner. Hmm. For example, a very, very, very popular line among youngsters is, I love you, but as a friend. Uh, friend zone. Yeah, I love <laughs> you, but as a friend. So the thing is that there is an attraction. If a girl or a boy, either of them say that they love you, but as a friend, hmm. what they exactly mean is that they are not sure about their feelings. They definitely hmm. feel an attraction towards you. But they are not sure if that attraction is worthy enough for them to get emotionally involved with you. Hmm. Sometimes even they don't realize the depth of their feelings. Sometimes Hmm. even they don't realize that they are dealing the situation in a mature way. Hmm. But yes, the love can remain constant. Hmm. Personally, it has been my experience when I was in college. Hmm. Obviously, proposals happen, rejections happen. But throughout this journey, there have been a few friends, male friends, Mm. with whom there has been an infatuation in the past. Mm. There was a certain intensity there. Mm. However, we both the parties had decided that our friendship was more important than these temporary infatuations. Mm. So we avoided getting into relationship. Mm. And as a result, Today we still enjoy the friendship even after one of us is married to someone else. Mm. We can have that comfortable talk even with his wife because mm. we refrain from entering into the danger zone of relationship which could mm. have probably lasted for four to five months mm. or if we are lucky, three years of college. Mm. I remember this one particular friend of mine. I asked him, did you ever have, have a crush on me? Because everybody around me teased me that you had a crush on me. Mm. So he said, yeah. I had a crush on you. I said, when? And then he tells me eight years ago. I said, (laughs) if only you had told me, then I might have considered it. He said, no, (laughs) if I would have told you, then you would have stopped talking to me or you would have friend zoned me. So Mm. I friend zoned myself. (laughs) So point being, because we never entered into that danger zone, Mm. a lot of friendships still date survive. Mm. When you are 17, 18, 19, you don't know what future is going to hold for you. Exactly. You don't know Mm the people you are going to meet in your future. Mm. Avoid ruining that bridge. Avoid burning that bridge with too many people. It's Mm. okay to have a relationship. It's Mm. okay to feel being loved. It's okay Mm. to feel being desired. But it is just that. Don't get drawn into Mm. that cyclone from where you can never come out. Just understand. Yes, ma'am. prioritize what is more Mm. important for you ma'am do you believe like like i just uh, thought this question while you were answering and do you believe that if a child is being loved by his surrounding by his parents by his family 
then the child will not uh, you know look for a girlfriend or a boyfriend or begin to a relationship like do do you think about what do you think about this everybody looks for an excuses everybody huh. looks for an excuse to blame all their mistakes on mm-hmm. i'm 33 years old and i still did blame my parents for i not completing my education and field of my interest I just told you I started working at 17 there was no way anyone was going to be able to force me into anything because mm. I had started earning my own money but till date mm. I blame them for that oh. even today I I often end up making mistakes and I tell my mother you should have stopped me <laughs> so now it is before I say anything my mother only says yes I am to be blamed I am to be blamed for everything you do wrong <laughs> so Yeah, we all look for reasons. Yeah, I have been through this particular situation where mm. I have seen people giving these reactions. Mm. Boys who don't have, who don't get love from their mm. mother, girls who don't get along with their father. Mm. They are called as boys with mommy issues or girls with daddy issues, mm. and then they are considered as emotionally vulnerable, where they seek out the place of solace. a comfort uh, hmm. bullshit it's not like that you end up getting into a relationship because it makes you feel desired it makes you feel good and it is good for your ego that's it nobody is to be blamed hmm. it's a very natural thing to happen so blaming families for not being not loving towards you not being hmm. loving towards you it doesn't make any sense it is high time This is new generation. You call yourself millionaires, and you mm. call yourself as the smartest generation of all. Mm. I would say you should be smart enough to take the responsibility. It's not a sin to be in a relationship. It's okay. I was in a relationship. It didn't work out. We broke up. Mm. It is as simple as that. Why do you want to look for blame? Getting into a relationship is not a sin. So don't justify it. It does not need to be justified. Mm. Problem is. You try to justify it by blaming it on family because you are judging yourself. Exactly. Mm. The crux is, why do you want to judge anybody? You should not judge yourself, and you should not judge others either. You don't know what they are going through. You don't know mm. what are their personal needs. Mm. You don't know what is their goal in life. Mm. Why do you want to be in a position where you you are judging yourself? Mm. And second question: How well do you know yourself that mm. you are going ahead and judging other people? Mm. Yes, ma'am. First, put in some efforts to understand yourself, and after that, you will only realize it doesn't make sense in judging other people mm. because there are too many facets to everything that a person does. So don't mm. judge and don't get judged. and if somebody is judging you that is their problem that is not your problem why do you want to make their problem as your problem like i starting in the podcast i said that uh, it would be a lot of positivity podcast and i could feel that like i don't know it's such a beautiful answer ma'am you talked about judging someone uh, like if you see that uh, students mostly when it when it comes to relationship or when it comes to judging anyone uh factors like looks factors like uh, number of followers popularity attraction uh, the number of girlfriend or boyfriend you are surrounded with we take such factors uh, while judging someone so like i want to ask you that how should we judge someone i just gave you the answer don't ever judge anyone but ma'am it's a human tendency to judge like we can't stop that it's not human tendency it is social tendency Social There tendency. is difference between human tendency and social tendency. Uh, what's human the difference? Human tendency is to be selfish. Human mm. tendency is to be selfish to think about yourself. A human being will never spend unnecessary time in deciding what other person should live his or her life like. It is social mm. tendency to decide how other people should live their life. Hmm. Huh. Now you have to exactly. decide. Exactly. Now you have to decide how much time do you have to judge other people. And if you have mm. a lot of time to judge other people, there is something seriously wrong with you. Hmm. If you exactly. have so much time to judge other people, you something is seriously wrong with you. And second thing. If you are doing something to put an impression or to set an impression in front of other people, then again the question arises: 
who are these people who you are trying to impress hmm. and how is it going to help you impressing them exactly being surrounded by a lot of people because hmm. you love to have fun you love to hmm. have people around you is a different thing hmm. because it is something you are doing for yourself you like to enjoy yourself hmm. in the company of people hmm. but if you are not that person if you are somebody who likes to enjoy his or his own company or her own company if you mm. like to enjoy your own company it is okay to be isolated it is perfectly fine to be the boy who is sitting in the center of the college premises mm. with all the other boys and girls of the college surrounding you mm. gathering mm. around you and chit chatting with you Mm. but it is also perfectly fine for you to be that boy who is sitting in a library reading some comic not even some very high ended book i'm just saying you mm. can be the boy reading a comic provided that is giving you happiness mm. ultimately whatever you do it is for your own happiness and if you don't feel happy when you are surrounded with people why do you want to be surrounded with people just because you can have other people say wow he is surrounded by people <laughs> you are making that person happy you are not making yourself happy then why won't you why would you want to indulge yourself in those things there is a need of like social validation lot of social validation in, in in today's generation they want to look themselves from someone else eyes and they want to feel good about that and what is that other girl or boy is thinking about me and there is one thing that really helped me ma'am uh, like i believe in this theory Uh, i realized and observed that 99.99999% of the people around you don't care about who you are what you do how you look at the end of the day exactly and and only so, your parents are thinking about you you are looking for correct and you are only looking for validation you also don't know why you are looking for the validation hmm think about it very generally you want to wear a good dress because somebody will say you are looking very pretty for 3 hours hmm how is that validation being any kind of contribution in your life towards achieving the goal in your life hmm teenage is the time when you are supposed to invest your time in growing you are hmm. th- supposed to invest your time in doing something constructive rather than doing things to get validation from the society hmm. society is very funny society will never give you validation hmm. society will never give you the feeling of security hmm. the feeling of security is something that you have to build in yourself you have to develop within yourself no one is going to hand it over to you just because you have lived by the social norms doesn't mean society is going to validate everything hmm on an example there is this person who is extraordinary who is a uh, behaving who is doing everything against the rules of society but that person ends up becoming very successful in his or her career mm. society says he is very successful in his career or she is very successful in his career but do you know he mm. did this or he did that mm. so he this person is successful in the career but still society has something to say about this mm. person as opposed to other person this other person has lived by the rules of society forever mm. and has not done anything exceptional in his or her career mm. and then again society will say yeah this person is good but did nothing in his life just mm. sitting in the old job did mm. not do anything extraordinary mm. <laughs> so exactly what validation you are craving for is a mm. big question to me think what is it going to get you is it worth it and if not just let it go so basically if you do something or you do not do something like if you haven't do something so that people are going to say about you they will that's their job hmm. why do you want to do their job let them do their job exactly exactly ma'am uh, ma'am in teenage life uh, obviously there, there is a relationship Uh, uh, a boy want to be in a relationship a girl want to be in a relationship but they don't know how to face rejection how to face break a uh, break uh, heartbreaks because no one is around us 
telling about these emotional uh, kinds of education you can say emotional education the system is not telling us we afraid of our parents to ask such so what would be your advice for a 20 year old uh, about heartbreak or a rejection what would be your advice it is sometimes i'll say it is really good feeling nurture it for a week or two mm-hmm. but that is it nurture it for a week or two sit with your friends bitch about everything but that is it don't go beyond that mm-hmm. for very simple reason what is a rejection after all mm-hmm. you like someone no you don't even know whether you like that person you think you like that person and hence you propose to that person Mm-hmm. and that person thinks that that person doesn't like you enough so that person rejects you so you are still thinking you don't exactly like, like that person enough and what you like about that person is it's a physical appearance you don't know exactly. that person to like that person enough mm-hmm. you have not spent that kind of time with that person to like that person enough mm-hmm. if you spend time with that person and then you start feeling that you like that person Mm-hmm. then you also get an idea about whether or that person will accept you or reject you mm-hmm. and you will also know the reasons for the rejection so you will not get upset about it but if you're going to just live in your thoughts where you think that something is like this and then you will get upset if she rejected me mm-hmm. now what will i do it's not a big deal rejections are a part and parcel of life you cannot force anybody to feel in a certain way i mean you can't even control your own feelings how are you going to control somebody else's feelings mm. can you control your feelings of liking somebody no. no but you want to control somebody else's feelings of not liking you is it mm. that a little hypocritical is this a little hypocritical yes ma'am so over here my only suggestion would be again ask yourself right questions what is it about her that is so attractive mm. and then decide for yourself are those aspects so important that you go into depression because of your heartbreak mm. and believe me it never is mm. it is not that you are going through a heartbreak you are going through your ego break it is your ego that um, is hurt because of the rejection it is not your heart exactly exactly you are, your feelings were so shallow that you could not have had an heart had a heart pain it was your ego that was hurt in the process because you were rejected so my suggestion would be don't associate ego with your relationships mm. because in future when you really find your true love mm. ego can spoil that true love also mm. because you will again prioritize your ego over that other person's feelings even if that person happens to be your life partner so mm. my suggestion is in this particular zone of rejection get out of your ego mm. don't let your hurt ego guide your feeling the moment mm. your hurt ego guides your feelings it is a mess Mm. Ego did no good for Ravan. Ego did no good mm. for Duryodhan. Exactly. And it is not going to do any good for you either. Uh, like because I, technically yes, speaking, historically, Ravan was not in love with Sita. Mm. He he was attracted to her body. He just wanted to prove his. Mm. He was not even attracted. If you ask me, he just wanted to prove a point that I am the strongest one. Oh. Duryodhan. he just wanted to insult pandavas he was also not interested in draupadi it was it is ultimately all about ego so when this girl rejects you you take it as a challenge i will convert this no into a yes mm. my does were focus on some startup <laughs> yes ma'am people are doing so many things at the age of 15 so and if you are 19 and 20 years old might as well start planning your life invest that kind of determination in planning your career rather than mm. converting her no into a yes because mm. that yes also wouldn't make much sense exactly exactly i think we we all are adopting this western culture where being being into a relationship uh, at the age of 19 20 and getting all social validation is it like a trend now and i personally observe this one thing that uh, one of the main reason why 
in this generation relationship don't last like there are relationship that last but uh, what i observe is that it is because of the reason that two people are attracted towards their physical body and after a period okay. of time after a period of time wo bolta hai ki ab hum bore ho gaye so i need a i want break up so i believe that is one of the reason like we are attracted towards the physical body we we want we are attracted towards the sex part of that uh, relationship not that spiritual part not that emotional part so i i believe this is one of the reason why this generation don't you know the moment you enter into a relationship with very shallow feelings mm. like you know we say it they are very shallow there is no depth to the feelings there is no depth to the relationship mm. it is at a very shallow level and that is why even when there is a breakup it doesn't really it doesn't really move you to the core either mm. so then again who are you breaking up for yourself or for the society mm. who are you getting into relationship for for yourself or for society mm. you want to continue this relationship for at least 3 months because i want to attend this event and i don't want to attend it alone if these are the mm. reasons for you to be in relationship then it's going to be pretty difficult get ask yourself why am i doing this and how is it contributing to my life long goal if it is contributing to your life long goal go ahead if it is not take a step back it's not worth it ma'am uh, do you spend time a lot of your time like with students like me boys and girls because you have so much uh, idea about how this generation thinks how it that is because when i was in college i was never in relationship i was mostly a shoulder to cry on <laughs> i was mostly a shoulder to tie on for boys and girls both so that is why i have a little bit of idea about how it goes on so i am also an english language trainer where i teach students so i get a little mm. bit of an idea about what is going on in the students lives so that's it and i have my younger siblings who constantly like to remind me that i am an old generation person <laughs> and that i'm not connected to their to their generation to in that generation. way so i have to make an extra effort <laughs> no no ma'am it's because it's because honestly yes, feelings are eternal feelings mm-hmm. are eternal mm-hmm. your feelings are same and similar to what romeo's feelings were in 15th mm-hmm. century the only difference is he died when he was a teenager you are still alive and if you are still alive believe me there is a long way to go and there will be a lot of beautiful things happening to you in the future hmm exactly ma'am uh like in a relationship there is one factor we call expectations or if we just like uh, put out the throw with the word relationship expectations is something that uh, like if i have a expectation from you and if you are not able to fulfill that expectation and you don't know about that expectation then i will say uh, gayatri ma'am is not good she she did this she did this she she is she is not good सो माई क्वेश्चन इज लाइक हम अपने एक्सपेक्टेशन को खत्म कर सकते हैं अगर खत्म नहीं कर सकते तो कैन वी मिनिमाइज इट और कैन वी लाइक कम कर सकते हैं यू हैव टू लिव विद देम आई नो अ लॉट ऑफ मैरिड कपल्स हु हैव बीन इन इन अ मैरिज फॉर लाइक अबाउट 60 इयर्स एंड दे वुड स्टिल टेल यू शी नेवर फुलफिल्ड एनी ऑफ माय एक्सपेक्टेशंस ही नेवर लिव्ड अप टू माय एक्सपेक्टेशंस हाउएवर दे आर कंसीडरिंग दैट दे हैव बीन टुगेदर फॉर 60 इयर्स and they cannot do without each other mm. that itself tells you that they were in a happy marriage mm. and if they were in a happy marriage then expectations are part and parcel of it sometimes you fulfill those expectations sometimes you are not able to fulfill those expectations mm. sometimes those expectations are rational sometimes those expectations are irrational mm. it all comes down to how much you want to be with that person and that is mm. what will give you your answer if you want to be with that person you won't mind bending a little bit and fulfilling those expectations however irrational they may be but if you are evaluating it's not worth it mm-hmm. then there is your answer mm-hmm. it's not worth it ma'am for Before. example mm-hmm. for example if you are talking about some of your family member mm-hmm. like if your mother asks you to do something Mm-hmm. Do you sit and evaluate whether it is rational or irrational? What do you do? 
she's going to feel better i'll just do it whether or not i like it why do you do it you do it for her satisfaction it is not doing anything to you in this situation you know evaluate whether it is worth it if in a relationship you are evaluating the worth of your investment mm-hmm. in that relationship then there is a problem then this is not a relationship this is a business deal which may be mm-hmm. may succeed or which may fail depending on how the give and take is give and take exactly. if you are talking about a true relationship it will always be beyond give and take hmm exactly exactly ma'am uh like after like while listening your answers uh like correct me if i wrong i believe that uh, you uh, like you are a kind of woman who observe a lot what is happening around her like when you are in college or when you are in school i i personally believe that like after listening your answers that you observe a lot and speak only at that time when it is needed to I was not always like that when i was in college i used to go out of my way to tell boys and girls don't get into this it's mm. not of any use you're wasting your time i used to judge them a lot mm. so when i'm telling you don't commit these mistakes i'm telling you after making all those mistakes mm. so i have made those mistakes and i have learned my lessons and i'm just sharing my experience with you so that you can make newer mistakes don't repeat mm. the mistakes of the exactly. younger generation it's not i mean you should make mistakes mm. it's fun to make mistakes and learn from them mm. but then life is too short to for you to make all the mistakes so learn exactly. from the mistakes of your yesterday generations and make some new mistakes mm. so yes and observation is a part and parcel of life i have been an observer always mm. and i like to observe how things are around us it, it is clearly uh, clearly visible from your answers also like how good your observations are uh so ma'am uh the pandemic uh, i've also like uh, said it before the pandemic has created a lot of mental health issues and like our uh, our country especially the people between 18 to 30 has like there is one addiction between youth that is a lot and our education system don't talk about it that is porn addiction and and okay. and uh, in this pandemic India is the second country in this world in which the highest traffic is coming on that sides and all the people are between 18 to 30 so we can say all the people are teenagers or youth we can say and okay. whenever we face such issues the main problem they the the main problem they ask like how to control your mind how to control like how how can i do myself that i will not watch that particular piece of content so what would be you like to say on that now the thing is that you need to understand when you say porn it's connected to sex mm-hmm. so i will not talk about porn as a just one aspect i'm going to talk about sex in general mm-hmm. because when you are saying that you have an addiction of porn somewhere mm-hmm. you are addicted to sex as well mm-hmm. body has its needs mm-hmm. food is one of its needs water is one of its needs and sex is one of its needs mm-hmm. you can live without sex but you cannot live without food and water mm-hmm. now my i want to ask you one question to explain you exactly what happens when you're watching porn i need mm-hmm. to give you an example mm-hmm. maybe it will help you understand better what is your favorite dish uh aloo paratha okay usually in your daily meals what is what does your mother cook for your daily meals chapati for sure uh, chawal okay. and dal these are the three how many chapatis do you eat every day like during your lunch lunch uh, two two chapatis but when aloo parothas are made how many aloo parothas do you eat i try to eat three or or, Whether or not there is space in your tummy hmm, correct an, uh, yes ma'am hmm. it doesn't matter whether there is space in your stomach if it is something that you desire you will have it more than what you can actually have correct mm. similar is the case with porn why do you want to eat that third aloo parotha because you don't have a mental satisfaction of eating enough mm. you ate two aloo parothas to fill your stomach but third one was to fill your satisfaction 
Mm -hmm. It was to fulfill your satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Porn is one thing that people do when they are not satisfied with themselves. Mm -hmm. It is directly connected to satisfaction. Mm -hmm. And which is where this happens. It starts with a very basic level of porn. And it starts mm. taking an aggressive form. It starts taking an aggressive form. And then it at one point reaches a very crude version of the form. Mm. Which is not even sex anymore. It is just cruelty. Mm. Exactly. The thing is that you need to feel this. Uh, this feeling of satisfaction is extremely important. Mm. The feeling of being content. During lockdown, people were isolated. Mm. And they were not satisfied with anything that was going around them. Mm. They were not satisfied in their personal lives. They were not satisfied with their professional lives. They were not satisfied with their social lives. Mm. It's all these three lives were under a lockdown. Mm. So naturally, there was one getaway. There were several getaways. They could have indulged themselves into some creative thing. They could mm. have indulged themselves into reading. They could have indulged themselves into some studies. They could have mm. as well considered this as a sabbatical and they could have gone ahead with some online course. Mm. It would have cost them just as much. Mm. But they were looking for temporary satisfaction. Porn provides you with that temporary satisfaction. We can say pleasure. It's just temporary pleasure. It's not even pleasure. It's not even pleasure. Do you think it's really pleasure that you're watching something happening? It is not even happening to you. Uh, no, ma'am, it's not pleasure. Hmm. It's it, it cannot be pleasure. Hmm. It's satisfaction. That's it. Satisfaction. Hmm. It is satisfaction. It is not giving you anything. It's your mental satisfaction. Hmm. For example, how the losers behave sometimes. When they don't win, at least I participated. I'm satisfied. <laughs> So when you are satisfied, it doesn't mean you have necessarily gained something. It is the mental state. Satisfaction is mental mm. state. So from when you're watching porn, you're not even getting pleasure. You're simply getting that mental satisfaction that you think is satisfaction. Mm. And that satisfaction, the level of that satisfaction goes on increasing. First, you get satisfied when you watch porn for one hour. Mm. The time goes on increasing. Then the content of it goes on becoming more and more aggressive. And then it mm. reaches a stage of crudeness. And that exactly. is when you stop being a human and you start becoming a beast. Mm. And why do you start becoming a beast? Because you are enjoying some acts which are so inhuman. Mm. You are enjoying the acts which are far away from pleasure. Mm. Which are far, far away from pleasure. You are enjoying the aspects wherein you are taking pleasure in somebody else's pain. Mm. And that is where things start going wrong. So porn, yes, it is an addiction. It is an addiction like that of an alcohol. But mm. it is connected with your mental satisfaction. The moment you condition your mind not to indulge into it, you can stop yourself indulging into it. And and how how do you like how do you condition your mind? Again, ask your ask the right questions to yourself. Mm. Why am I watching this? Mm. Okay, I'm watching a naked man and a naked woman indulging mm. into a sexual activity. Mm. Who is doing this sexual intercourse? Where is this happening? It is happening on screen. Mm. And during this sexual intercourse, am I a part of it in any way? Mm. It, I'm not. So the whole thing is extremely unproductive. Exactly. Mm. Do you have so much time with you? To really indulge into unproductive activities. Mm. You don't. You don't. Mm. Believe me, you don't. If you are in your mm. early 20s or in your late 20s, mm. this is the time when your career is shaping. Mm. Instead of involving yourself into all these silly things, and I call them silly things because you don't get anything out of it. It's like watching mm. the food videos. Mm. I mean, I had I had that addiction. I had to overcome that addiction. I used to just watch the videos when they are making all those cakes. Can I eat it? No. I cannot eat it. Mm. But I'm watching it. That is how it is with porn. Exactly. You are watching it. You are not exactly eating it. Mm. And there are how many recipes you see on the videos on Facebook or Insta that you actually do at home. 
you do none of them you simply watch them and you simply see them oh it looks so delicious and you just leave it you don't actually make it similarly is the case with porn there are about 90% of things that you watch you are not going to implement them in real life exactly exactly so why do we even want to get into that space something so unproductive exactly that is honestly another reason for relationships to not work ma'am porn because boys have their expectations mm-hmm. set mm-hmm. on the basis of the porn movies exactly and girls have their romantic expectations set based on hindi movies which is like the contrast beautifully so women are expecting romance from hindi movies and boys are expecting sex from the porn oh, no. and it is never going to match it is never going to match that's like zameen asma so yeah when you talk about it's it pulls apart <laughs> it's pulls apart exactly so you have to you know, manage both the expectations mm. and both the expectations are coming from like different things oh wow, what a beautiful answer at this like like i need to listen it after again again and again i, th- I think so uh like you talked about that it is all about mental it is all, it, it is all about okay. it is all about mindset it is all about self awareness so ma'am i'm in this lockdown uh due to covid i will say there are there's so much mental health issues arises in this generation and also due to social media the this feeling of comparison and jealousy you know taken a new face this this happened me with me also like there are many people around me whom jinke sath main apna ko compare karta rehta hu and i and they, at the same time i jealous of them so i want to ask you that how to eradicate this feeling of jealousy and comparison first step towards uh, eliminating these feelings is to accept them hmm and it is okay to feel jealous hmm. it is okay to feel jealous somebody is doing something i'm not doing it i am jealous how you utilize this feeling of jealousy is another thing altogether hmm. with this jealousy are you inspired to do better in your life are you determined to hate that person if you can you can get inspired or you can get determined to hate the other person mm-hmm. if you get inspired to do better in your life then it's okay be jealous that's nothing there's no nothing wrong with it mm-hmm. second thing is that during lockdown a lot of people dreaded their own company Mm. you spent so much time in getting the social mm. validation that you never spent mm. time with yourself to really understand what is it that you like what is it that you want mm. exactly and during this lockdown you were not getting social validation because you were not out there in the society you were with yourself mm. and now you dread it because now the inner self was asking you you did so many things for other people what did you do for me and you realize that you did not do anything for yourself mm. and when you realize that you had not done anything for yourself you did you were not able to face yourself mm. you could not live with your own company because your inner self was asking you mm. answers to the questions that mm. you were not comfortable with why do you want to give that opportunity to yourself again satisfy your inner self rather than getting the social validation because social validation may be temporary but satisfaction of inner self that is bliss mm-hmm. that is pure bliss ma'am in the beginning you were talking about uh, the meditation program that job job start karne wale so can you please throw some light on that kab se hai kya hai and what is it actually about so the thing is unme uh, there is this particular thing that happened a lot over the past one one and a half year mm. people are gripped with stress and anxiety post lockdown mm-hmm. the stress and anxiety is a product of a lot of things mm. not being able to cope with the change not being able to achieve as much as they had planned mm. not being able to fulfill their own expectations mm. the product of isolation everybody is in stress and anxiety hmm. people are losing so many people are losing their near and dear ones people hmm. are losing their a lot of things professionally as hmm. well and a solution to hmm. this is only one meditation 
there are several transcendental meditation videos available on YouTube. Mm -hmm. But then there comes a point when even they stop helping. Because though there is an instruction coming, the mind is wandering everywhere. Which is where this particular style of meditation comes into play. Mm -hmm. I am planning a mega meditation workshop on 21st of June on the occasion of World Yoga Day. Mm -hmm. Wherein I will be sharing meditation techniques specifically helpful in eliminating stress and anxiety from your life. Mm -hmm. It is going to be a free workshop. And I, I would like to take this opportunity to invite all your viewers to this particular meditation workshop. It will be conducted online and it will be conducted on a global level. And that is why the timing is also set in a manner wherein people from maximum countries, mm -hmm. maximum time zones can participate. I shall share the details of the session sure with you soon. Sure.